and then the doctor says, it's okay, I've been married seven times, and they all left and took everything I owned. And I'm like, that does, that's not okay. We're not. Things are not better now, you jackass. You are not helping, my dude. You are not <laughs> helping here. Also, four marriages in, prenup. Come on, learn your yeah, lesson. You're You've got really, a prenup. Yeah, last three I blame on you, man. Okay. <laughs> Marry me, divorce me, and steal my money four times. Shame on you. <laughs> Marry me, divorce me, and steal my money five times. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they don't make a methadone for our addiction. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back. I'm so confused. I, I have no <laughs> idea what happened. This is normally like a crazy thing that Eli does as a prank. He's not even here right now. I don't know what happened. I don't know. This was definitely a prank, though. Uh, unfortunately, though, he will be unable to join us today. But in his stead, we're happy to welcome back our favorite guest masochist. That's right, Kara. Deal with it. Michael Marshall. Ooh. He is the co-host of the Skeptics with a K podcast, the host of Incredulous and project director for the Good Thinking Society. Marsh, welcome back. Hey, hey. So a couple of things, a couple of things. First of all, lovely to be back. Always an absolute pleasure. <laughs> uh, second of all, I know that you're bullshitting when you say favorite guest masochist, because unlike Cara Santa Maria, I listen to this show and I know that you say that to everyone. So Cara will never find out that that was you bullshitting her, but I know I'm fully aware of these things. Right. I should I should have gone the other way. I should have had you and then Cara on when I pulled when I tried to pull that <laughs> off. Yeah. Kara comes out from behind a curtain, attacks Marsh like Jerry Springer. <laughs> Yeah, is that is that Kara's walk on music we can hear? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The President Goes to Heaven. It's the story of whatever Noah and Marsh tell me it is. I, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of questions. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. Legit contender for the weirdest shit we've ever watched. So buckle in. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't think any of my notes do not end in a question mark. Like, right. we have 34 <laughs> pages of notes. It's yeah. like 10, we have, 11 for me. There is so much caps lock in our notes. <laughs> <laughs> and Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you like a movie with a moral tale, but you really want that lesson to come from someone who's politics are as unfathomable as their views on 9-11, you will love this movie. I don't know what anyone involved in this film thinks or believes either happened during the, the reality of the real world or happens after you die. All of it is a complete black box mystery to me. Okay, it's the story of whatever Noah tells me and Mark what <laughs> happened. Okay, so well, here's the thing, and this really throws you, right? So if we tell you that we're going to watch a religious movie about an evil president you could be forgiven for thinking that we're talking about a Christian movie about Shmarak Shmobama, right? We've done Christian movies about Shmarak Shmobama before, but that's not what we were watching. That's what we expected mm. to be watching. 100%. But we were watching and, and we discovered 48 minutes into an hour and 20 minute movie <laughs> that we were watching a Muslim movie mm -hmm. about Shmord Shmubble you Shmush. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. At one point, I was like, "Okay, they're going after George W." Earlier, I was like, "Is this about Clinton, Obama?" I'm not sure, but yeah, right. But I, I couldn't always tell if they were pro George W. or not. It like it, it became clear really, really late on. But there were times that I yeah. couldn't tell that they were critical. Or not. Oh, I'm not clear still. I'm going to be asking throughout, <laughs> like. What team is the movie on about like 12 different, very major geopolitical issues that they will address? Yeah, well, the thing is, is that they're I will not, not know what they're talking. Yeah, this guy is not on any fucking team, right? He's all over the goddamn map. It's a it's a delight trying to decode this thing. OK, but we agree this is a Muslim movie yes. that I did. That was my yes. summation by the end. This is pro. This movie is in favor of the Muslim faith at the end of the day, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a surprise Muslim movie. <laughs> it's, it's such a surprise Weird. Muslim movie that I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to learn that 
that the guy genuinely converted to Islam midway through the making of this film and had to do a hard yeah. pivot in the script. And he just like ran onto the set like John Cleese and he was like, nobody expects the Muslim Inquisition. <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So first of all, I was thinking it might have to be the best last five minutes of anything. That was my honorable yes. mention because I promise you okay. nothing <laughs> you have ever experienced ends more unexpectedly. That's correct. Well, unexpectedly and inexplicably than this movie. And we will we'll get there. Eventually we'll get there. It is shocking. It is, it is. It, it is. is still burned into my goddamn okay. eyes. You know yeah. how insane it sounds so far based on what we've said? It's <laughs> so far beyond that for the final five minutes. It really is. It really is. And that almost topped it, but it, it didn't displace from the absolute best worst me, which was best worst, how to end a scene. Because all the way through this film, the conversation is constantly stopping because he shit himself. It's <laughs> it's like recording with Eli. It's just like, yes. hang on, no, it's, it's happened again. Can we, yeah. can we take five to sort this out? At least Eli knows how to play through sometimes when you really have right. to. <laughs> I just, I love the listener experience at this point, right? Because we're like, it's a Muslim movie. And now you're just like, yeah, the scene's constantly stopping because somebody shit themselves. And, mm -hmm. he, and, and he's not, that is correct, right? That is what happens. The last five minutes are even weirder. So yeah, buckle the fuck in, listeners. Yeah. If, they, if this ever goes on to like Amazon Prime and it gives you those kind of four word descriptions, like two of the words will have to be <laughs> scatological Islam. That's, that's, yeah, no, that's I think it's an event diagram of one thing. I think it's shit, shit, shit Islam. I think that's the end of the <laughs> description. Well, so my best worst is not going to straighten the audience experience out in any way because I have and trigger warning. Consider my best worst a fucking trigger warning. Best worst rape apologetic. Yes. Good Lord, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, best worst happens. child rape apologetic. Keep in mind, we do Christian movies for a living. <laughs> Yikes. So just be forewarned, that's coming in act one and apropos of not one goddamn thing. Yeah, sure is. That's real. I was going to go with best worst human beings speaking words. <laughs> so it's a, it's a motion picture of mm -hmm. actors mm -hmm. doing... Stuff. Human beings speak words throughout, yeah. Yeah, when mm -hmm. I say speaking, I really mean reading because nobody is off book. They're all reading <laughs> from a script that is just off camera in this, every yes. or single on camera. scene. <laughs> So they're doing that, and it's like the script was was like a ransom note made of magazine cutouts. They're reading it as if that's the case. And the kidnapper's like a five-year-old who's like, you know, bad at gluing, had to use lefty scissors when he's a righty. It's, it's real bad. It, it really is. They spend so much time looking off camera at the script that there is so little eye contact in this film that it feels like I'm back at a skeptics conference. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, no, to give you an idea how crazy this fucking movie is, none of us went with best worst wig, right? We'll get there. Right? There's a high contender there, but we know, but none of us. Oh, even... I, I had a journey about the wig throughout my yeah. notes, and it was very exciting by the end. And it's, it's wig yeah. singular. It's not even best worst wigs. It's wig singular. Yes, right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this movie careens off course so often that we need a break inspection before we review it. So while we take care of that, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back far too soon with all the outright bat shittery that is The President Goes to Heaven. Hello. Welcome to Typical Soul Selling Experience. How can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking to sell my soul. Well, obviously. Right. What for? Well, I tell myself every new year that I'm going to get in shape. A couple weeks later, my resolutions, they're in shambles. And then I beat myself up about it. And then I treat myself to some cheese as an apology for going so hard on myself. But then I beat myself up about that. So, you know, I figured maybe selling my soul to be condemned to eternal torment after I die might be easier than actually sticking with an exercise program. So here I am. Well, if you want to get in shape easily, why not just try FitBod? Oh, what's, um, what's FitBod? Oh, man, FitBod is great. Noah, hey, what? What are you doing in? Oh, no, never mind. Sorry, I heard it. I heard it. Go ahead. So, but yeah, but yeah, but Fitbot is an app that creates a workout routine that's personalized to your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve, so you can keep the momentum going all the way through the year. Wow, that sounds great. 
Yeah, I've been using FitBod for a while now. It makes planning my workouts easy and it switches things up often enough to keep me from getting burnt out. I spent a lot of money on exercise equipment in the past just because, you know, the dust has to go somewhere. But FitBod mm. actually keeps me motivated. Plus, a full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. All right, good stuff. How do I sign up? Join FitBod today and build a routine that lasts all year. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash G-A-M. Will do. And uh, yeah, sorry, uh, demon guy. I guess I won't be selling my soul today after all. Uh, good, because uh, it turns out we've already got it. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, you uh, you sold it in 96, so there could be a sequel to Speed. Sequel to Speed, oh my God, that's right. That's right, so worth it, though. Uh, if you say so. So good. <laughs> hey, C. Tom, thanks so much for coming in. Hey, yeah, no problem. Thanks for agreeing to help with my movie. Yeah, man, well, you know, we uh, we wouldn't want those pictures getting out now, would we? <laughs> Damn right you wouldn't, mm. so, okay. yeah. So, so, but, but here's the reason why we asked you, and we, we just... We just finished going over your script, and we have a few, a, a few questions. Questions, yeah, sure. Fire away. So, uh, what is, um, mm -hmm. and any of it? Sorry, what? So, I think what Rupert's asking is, what the fuck did we just read? My, my movie. Uh, I I don't get the question. What are you guys talking about? Okay, so so, so like. Like it starts out like it's going to be about this president learning his lesson and becoming religious because of a near death experience, mm -hmm. but but then it spends a bunch of time on child rape apologetics, apologetics and then yeah. there's yeah. all this stuff about the comatose president's poop, and then out of nowhere for like <laughs> twenty minutes, poop. it's a nine eleven truther movie, and then the doctor's wife leaves him for no fucking nothing ever comes back or matters, so like. Like what? What is your movie about? Oh, uh, Allah, the God of Islam. What? Yes, yep. It's about the truth of the Islamic faith. So, oh, that's that's the movie. Okay, well, I mean that does explain all the child rape apologetics. Okay, so but 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 Tom, uh, C Tom, C, C Tom. Uh, it's a uh, lowercase C Tom. What? Whatever. How how could you tell he was saying it with a capital C? You heard like, it. Larry, 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 hold on. So, so I guess mm. my question is, why would you want to make this movie? Oh, yeah. So uh, a fellow named Eli Bosnick said he'd give me $1,000 to do it. Apparently some kind of revenge against a guy named Keith. So, oh, yeah. I, I see. Something about penguin pants. So, some what? Larry, just... <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and I'm going to give the movie a little bit of credit to start. I don't know that we've ever seen an opening second that better encapsulated just what a piece of shit we were in for. <laughs> <laughs> like, the quality of this is so bad. I looked at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen expecting the time and date to be there, you know, yeah, like yeah. in the 80s. That happens later, though, doesn't it? It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and. You you were looking for a time and date. I was looking at the bottom corner of YouTube because I thought this looks so shit. I, I'd written, what do you make me watch? And how come I'm only the 476th person <laughs> to have viewed this on YouTube? That's too low a number. Okay, it was at like 585 when I got to it. So wow. like a bunch of gamblers. <laughs> it is yeah. definitely a bunch of young people like, listening to this. Clearly, clearly, often, uh, yeah. clearly watched, yeah. <laughs> I feel like probably half of the views this movie has are, are ours at this point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah gotta be but the thing i'm assuming what, what you meant at zero seconds was a zero budget movie production <laughs> shows up as the title right well yeah i mean even before that it really is a dead game because there's no productions uh logos or anything like that it's just suddenly we're looking at this you know decidedly middle class 1600 square foot home that is supposed to be the president's <laughs> retirement home yeah. <laughs> and it's filled with like he's filled it with staff because, you know, the president would have a bunch of people working for him in his 1600 square foot home. <laughs> yeah. My dad, who like hoarded stone dust in our house, would have been like, wow, that is gauche. That's not a nice house. <laughs> 
And you say he's filled it with staff. To be honest, the production value of all this was so low that I couldn't tell if the people who were wandering around in the background of the shots were actors or extras or just the people who happened to own the house he was filming in. <laughs> who just like, well, look, you can film in the living room, but I'm still going to be doing my stuff in the kitchen. I'm not okay. going to change my routine for you. Marsh, the answer is yes. The, the answer is yes to your question. It's all of those, for sure. Well, so, but to, to but to clue us in, one of the people, one of the help people, has this ridiculous like 1947 maid outfit on. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Twelve seconds into the movie, and we have a racially problematic butler. Fifteen seconds, we have a racially problematic maid. Yep, yep. literally. So I was yeah. like, okay, the movie has started. This is a movie. We're not just watching people milling around in the house where they <laughs> paid four dollars to have it as the set. Yeah. So and I have the my music note right away is this cartoon is still awaiting the turn. Yeah. Right? This is this is still the part where the dog is going about his normal morning routine and hasn't seen the cat yet. Yeah, yeah. I had for my music note some cheeky scams are plotting hijinks in this Wild Western saloon. <laughs> I guess. I didn't have a music note. I was just like, it's a hate crime already. Fuck, yeah, this is bad. <laughs> well, and then his daughter says, "Bye, Dad. I'm going out to shop." Except for she says that with a very, very thick Latin American accent. Oh, is that Latin American? I thought it was Eastern European. And I thought, has the president of the United States got an Eastern European daughter? Because that seems like a security risk from like a geopolitical <laughs> point of view. <laughs> like there were rumors about Trump, but it was never as yeah, far so as an actual <laughs> daughter. Uh, I thought it was like a Boston accent. It moved around a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It word might have been different. Well, on an ad read, yeah. It might have been different people playing the same role too. We'll find out he does that from time to time. A Boston communist, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. So yeah, and so the president is talking to Flotus and they're remembering their honeymoon and stuff like that. And this is where we all first wrote in our notes, huh, no second takes in this production, huh? <laughs> is this where he's, he's sort of talking his way through a story and the idea is he's recited this story so many times that she can do it word for word, but she can't deny the committee. <laughs> no. Oh, it's the, the greatest. They try, at one point, it's like... <laughs> They're the married couple, so she knows what he's about to say because he says the thing and he starts to and she goes along with it. But then he forgot the line like eight words in. So he, he fucks it up right away and he has to do that like REM end of the world thing where he's like, six o'clock TV hour. Blue <laughs> <laughs> self chirp. End of the world. <laughs> As we know it. He totally does. and But they're talking about maybe going off together or whatever. But as they're talking about that, the assistant shows up and she's like, hey, you know, I just got a, a call from the injured veterans. I guess they couldn't get the rights to wounded warriors. Right. And they'd like you to give a talk at their thing. And the president is just like wounded veterans. Fuck those people. I hate injured and dead veterans. They're stupid. They volunteered. And I wrote in my notes, well, in the pre-Trump days, that would have been impossibly over the top, huh? Yeah. I, I've, I've got that note quite a few times in there too. But I also love the idea that, you know, he doesn't give a damn about the injured or the dead veterans. But like, in fairness, the dead ones probably aren't inviting you to give you a talk. So it's, it's probably <laughs> fine. Sure. I thought they were I thought they were like lampooning Democrats at this point because we didn't learn that it's about George W. until like 50 minutes in. <laughs> so this read as like, fuck those injured veterans. I'm a Democrat and I hate God. So fuck them. It's so weird. like, who is this supposed to be for? Even when we find out it's about George W., the, the politics of it don't pick a side ever. No, well, that's again, C. Tom, the creator of this film, is all over the goddamn map. For a second, I was like, is this about Obama? And they did him as a white guy? This is insane because it's made in 2011. So it would make sense for them to like yeah. be responding to Obama. But <laughs> well, and also, like, we've watched a movie where they did Obama and made him a white guy, too. So, you know, that's yeah. And it was much more tasteful than this one. <laughs> <laughs> and higher quality. You shouldn't have so many points of reference for this film. It's not good to have so many points of reference. Fair. So, and this is also the first of many times where someone will turn to the president and say, you're more powerful than God. In this instance, it's the Flotus. And I'm like, well, we're all more powerful than God. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but like she says that to him, like, the, you know, you're more powerful than God. And he said, we're not supposed to say that about ourselves. It's like, 
you didn't say that about yourself. She said it about you. That's that's external. Right, this is totally She's the one putting that on you. <laughs> totally different thing. Literal God. It's like nicknames. You can't. Like, I can't say I'm literal God. You have. You guys have to give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. I am though. Yeah, but so then we introduced the fact that while he was president, I guess he's no longer president, but while he was president, he had a secret bank account set up where all of the companies. <laughs> this is very serious. This, this is, is a real stuff. This probably silliest, really happened. Silliest. <laughs> All of the companies put 10% of their profits into his secret bank account. <laughs> right. And he can't remember the code. He says at one point, he's like, it should be worth, and I wrote in my notes, don't say an impossibly and stupidly large number, hundreds of billions of dollars. Eight <laughs> million bazillions. <laughs> is the, it, so 10% is worth hundreds of billions. So, yeah. The, the big oil companies were making trillions and they were tithing 10 to him. It's cool. And yeah. he explains that. He's like, yeah, 10% of the profits from uh, big oil, war crimes, fetus trade. You know how it goes. And then he's like, <laughs> it's so nonchalant. And he's like, hey, hon, uh, I just, I can't remember the password to our evil war crimes account. The good evil war crimes. Do you remember? Was it mwahaha one, two, three? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> And I do like how he's looking for the code for the secret account, he says, that they created for me. And I thought, are we really going to explore what the they is? Is this going to go down the lines, you know, they own the president, you know, they, the they, you know, the shmurshmurs, the, the yes, they, you know, the Yes, they. we are absolutely going to go yeah. to the shmurshmur before it's all over. 100%. And instead of shmurshmur, he's going to say, Jew. <laughs> he's going to say, Jew. <laughs> Yeah, he might as well be like Smurfer and then be like, <clears throat> no, sorry, Jewish. I'm talking about Jewish people. And this is also the point in my notes where I'd written, imagine a president having hidden money in foreign bank accounts. Left this movie from five years before Trump. Yeah, that's right. This is a recurring note. <laughs> so now the, the racially problematic maid, who, by the way, is wearing a blonde wig. Get used to that. She's also wearing white gloves. Yep. She's wearing a blonde wig and white gloves. So she looks like a mime, like he's hired a mime to <laughs> pretend to wash brains in his kitchen. <laughs> they did hire some mimes to be extras in the movie, not her. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get to some interesting miming eventually. Yeah. So, but the maid is done with dinner, which apparently includes whole strawberries <laughs> as a side. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they have to know how food works. You know they know how food works. Yeah. The maid's like, dinner's ready. And we look at the plates she's holding. And she's like, yeah, it's General So's chicken. I made fresh, not out of the box that I ordered to go. And nine whole <laughs> It's so fucking weird. But but they can't find the president. Flotus goes to check on him in, in the garage. And he's apparently he has passed out and some kind of medical malady. We know this because she says, and I quote, the president's lying there. The president's lying there. Somebody help. The okay, president's calm down. lying there. Calm down. No. <laughs> She's like, the president's lying there. The president's lying there. Uh, okay. Oh, with all the urgency of somebody pretending they can't find the toddler under the blanket. Yes. Oh, absolutely. The, the line read was very much all the panic of a lady whose shopping cart had got a little away from her in the shop. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So, so we cut to the hospital. And at first I wrote like the hospital slash corner of the dirt mall that they were allowed to record. <laughs> but apparently they had access to a real hospital, which is depressing as fuck. Yes, they did. They did genuinely. Yeah. So but this doctor is explaining to everybody that the president had a stroke and as is in a coma. This is like a press conference that they're having. Yeah, it's, it's a press conference in front of all of four people in the corner of the room they were allowed to be in at that point. Yeah. Yes. That is, that is the full pre press conference for the president's stroke. And also, this is where we find out that we, we see this this doctor, this he's going to be the chief surgeon, and he looks like Gene Parmesan from uh, Arrested <laughs> Development. And, he does, exactly. Uh, I really wanted like Lucille that. Booth to just like walk in and squeal at him. It was going to be oh, amazing. Gee! He always <laughs> figures it out. Yeah. So good. <laughs> one other thing about these doctors, the first one comes out and he's like, yeah, so the president had a stroke. The amount I would say is massive. It was a massive stroke. Massive stroke, yep. <laughs> and um, it's actually a team of doctors. And uh, you know how doctors usually rotate um, when they do press conferences? They start <laughs> rotating here. Yes. So he's like, massive Tag stroke. team. And now I present a doctor with an accent, which makes him real. <laughs> and they go back and forth trading off questions from the press here. 
Yeah, sort of halfway between them doing a job share or them being like a medical version of the Beastie Boys, just sort of right. delivering the line. <laughs> right. But like the Beastie Boys are badly choreographed. So at one point he's like, wait, wait, no, switch back. I do, I, I'm doing odds. So I do the so odds, you do, do the evens. You go back. <laughs> And the questions are so dumb. They couldn't come up with any normal human questions to ask. So it's stuff like, how long will this coma be? And one woman's line is, do you believe in miracles? Mm. But I transliterated it as, do you make believe in ber miracles? <laughs> <laughs> she fucked up a line twice and they still kept it. <laughs> she might as well be like, keep rolling? Miracles? <laughs> uh, and the great thing is, because the camera's from behind her, and she's one of the four people in this press conference, mm -hmm. through the rest of this scene, you can see her like beating herself up about fucking a lineup. <laughs> yes. And like concentrating so hard not <laughs> right. to fuck the next one up. It's amazing. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. <laughs> so, and then we cut. So we're, we're back at the president's house. We're outside his house now. We're a dude from the fucking World Christian Wrestling Federation wearing that same blonde wig is reporting on the president's stroke. Oh, right? it's so good. When, when it cut to this reporter outside, I laughed so hard. He's so unexpectedly like physical and sort of like over the top in every little movement he's making. He's pretending to be the TV reporter. He doesn't have a microphone. He's got no way of identifying himself as a reporter. He's just <laughs> shouting outside of a, a sort of suburban house, basically. I, I wrote in my notes, gesticulate less, bro. You don't have to point when you say outside. <laughs> we get it. You certainly have to, don't have to point to every bit of the outside. You can at least point to one bit and yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> but yeah, but he's reporting that the president had a stroke while trying to open a wooden box. I'm like, what an insane detail, but that's going to matter. <laughs> that's where the password to the evil account might be. Where he's like, be, hey, hon, and she was like, it's in the, the junk drawer with the, the rubber bands. Yeah. That's where <laughs> it is. And he's like, wait, wait the, with the box of rubber bands or the loose ones? The loose ones in the box. <laughs> the box is in a cupboard. What the fuck are you even talking about? Yeah, and by the way, he's from Channel 69 News. Get it? Get yeah, it? although it takes him a couple of times to remember that. He does sort yes. of have a little bit where he's forgotten <laughs> the name of the news station because he knows there was a joke in it, but he's Christian, so he doesn't understand the joke. That's why right. he had the pause. <laughs> it's a number, but I can't think of the number. <laughs> I was thinking that they they eventually made it 69 because that was the only number he could remember consistently. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so then we cut to a couple of Secret Service agents guarding the comatose president's door. Oh, okay. The two of them are just standing there and then both of them at the exact same time put their hand up to their ear and like that's okay. Secret service guys have an earpiece and then they push it into their ear to like hear it better, mm -hmm. but they don't respond to anything here. No, I think the movie just thinks secret service guys touched their ear for no reason. And they were like, that's because these guys didn't have thing. the earpiece in right. at no. that moment. Like we, we cut to like the, in the next scene, there will be two different secret service agents that do have the earpiece in, but yes. <laughs> it, yeah. It was fucking bizarre. They were just going to harmonize a cool vocal run like Mariah Carey. Can do it. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. It's also great because like, I guarantee these secret service agents were uh, inspired by men in black. Like the, the makers of the film, like we see men in black. So it's always old white guy, young black guy. That's right. the way they pair things up in anything where you have to wear shades for a living. That's, yeah. that, that, that's the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so we see them and then we cut to the president's hospital room. He will spend essentially the rest of this movie laying on this gurney in a short hospital gown with no blanket. Mm. Right. We're going to see him constantly there. And the Flotus and the Secret Service are coming in along with this reverend who looks like if like if Santa had to get dressed up for court. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Also, can we just point out that the president of the United States went to the hospital and he has a semi-private room. He does, <laughs> yes. It's an adjoining room <laughs> with a little curtain. Oh, it totally does. And this is one of the times where something happened that blew my mind. The audio dipped out because someone was getting an SMS message. Yes! And it starts doing the... And I thought, I thought, hang on. I didn't get a text message while that was... I rewound the film. It happened again. I put my phone on fucking airplane mode. Just be sure. I was like, no, that's on the movie's end. It is. It totally is. And it drops out like mid-conversation. The guy's in the middle of his prayer and suddenly it's silent for a second. Telegram, this is a zero-budget movie. Stop. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> and then quite suddenly, 
everybody has to stop and they're like, oh, what's that smell? We better leave this room. And I'm like, tell me this fucking movie didn't just do a goddamn fart joke. Leave the <laughs> fart jokes to the goddamn professionals, you motherfucker. This is my street corner. Yeah. All right. I was here first. Fair. In, in my head, I was like, oh, he shat himself like really badly. But they go for fart for a second. But then we find out in a second. No. He shat himself like really badly. Yeah. Constantly. That will be 80% of the rest of the movie talking about how he keeps <laughs> shitting himself yeah. really badly. I, I have messaged Eli uh, shortly after this scene to be like, I'm really sorry you missed this one, man. This has got a lot of poop in it. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, Heath, I had to go back and change this from fart to shit to fart like three times in my notes as we asked the movie. Was, I was like, wait, was did he fart or did he shit himself? Because right, like the next scene... The reverend is talking with the flotus and they're talking about how much he, the, the president hated fart. Right. Yes. But then somebody's like, I changed the president. You can go back in. Yes. Yeah. Right. So yes. It's, it's at least a shark. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that dilemma, that dichotomy of did he fart or did he shit himself? That's going to basically count for essentially the stakes of this film. That's the highest <laughs> stakes care of this film. <laughs> well, at the very least, it's the singular thread that runs all the way through it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but eventually the, the doctor comes out and he's like, yeah, yeah, he, we, we changed his diaper. You can go back in there and finish up that, um, that prayer scene. So they go back in and this is such a weird, bizarre fucking little detail. The guy, the president, the actor who's supposed to be in a coma, for some reason, refuses to close his eyes. Eyes <laughs> wide open throughout the movie and they show it. Throughout the entire fucking movie to the point where like, in just a second, we're going to like, we're going to cut from this scene to this exact same scene, except two inches to the left. And the only difference is that the right side of the screen now cuts off at his nose or so. So you can't see that. His eye. So there was clearly a fight between him and the director. And this was the resolution to that fight. Right. <laughs> anyway, I love that so goddamn much. So deposition Santa is going to start doing a prayer form and they catalog all the evil shit that this president has done. This was the first time we were like, oh, it's George Bush. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This was the first because he's like, you know, they they attacked. He attacked a country that hadn't attacked us and he did it all for the oil money. And, you know, maybe he staged an attack on his own country. You know, like all of this shit is in the prayer. And it's supposed to be jokingly delivered as, you know, this is what some people say. But, you know, he's all right. He's a good guy. OK, yeah. What is the movie in favor of vis-a-vis -vis attacking a countries that don't attack you and stealing oil? Where did they land? Positive? I have absolutely no idea. I, I mean, maybe, maybe Noah can decode this for us. I don't know whether this film is like pro or anti-God, whether it thinks God is on his side or against him. They make it clear that he's killed millions and like leveled baby formula factories in Iraq. Mm -hmm. But then it refers to them as minor transgressions and no one seems to care. So well, and, and they list that as like a stat on the back of a baseball card. Where they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all-star team 2004. Like, yeah. Right. So the, but this is the evil Christian that's trying to like paper over all of the terrible stuff that he's done and make it not sound as bad as it is, right? The, the movie is like condemning him and also condemning the church for not condemning him to, to a certain degree there. Right. That okay. only now makes is, it makes any clarity to me. <laughs> yeah. You finally opened my eyes to this film. <laughs> well, so and it, it's going to get so goddamn much weirder from here, right? Because then the same guy, Deposition Santa, he comes back in, right? He th That guy leaves, right? The, the, the Flotus gives him a check and he leaves. And then that same guy comes back in and he's dressed now as like, I don't know, like an Eastern Orthodox rabbi or something. I don't know what he's going for here. I saw a rabbi and I was like, okay, are they having this actor be multiple characters? And what they did was try to do the mustache and glasses on top of the guy who already has glasses and a giant Santa yes, beard. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. And yes, that is what they did. I thought she was paying. I, I, I thought this was the same character, and Flotus had just paid him to go and get changed and come back as a different religion. Right. Like it was baffling because he comes back several times. This isn't. This is meant to be Catholic as well. Yes. Because he, the, as he described in it, so that is not how a Catholic priest. He's dressed as a rabbi. That's not what Catholics look like. Okay. But I thought she just like paid him to convert. Right. But he's got a cross. He's like a rabbi with a giant cross on. It's really fucking weird. Yeah. Okay, that fits with my other theory, which is this is a chaplain who's making like double, triple salaries by posing as a priest and a rabbi and a mom. <laughs> well, that's what I thought they were going for because she gives him a check every time. But no, this is supposed to be different characters 
all played by the same actor, but he has a different yes. glasses and mustache. We find that out at the end of the scene, and it's so incredibly weird. Also, it is weird. He's just got three sets of glasses and three mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we have to address... It's like, okay, so the filmmaker doesn't know about cutaways. So the way you would normally, if you've got actors that are fucking up the line, what you would normally do is you'd film them going through it three or four times and just be like, ah, oh, you know, power through when you fuck up. And then you would also film like, you know, close-ups of the faces of the people he's talking to or, 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 or you know, other things in the hospital. And then when you edit it all together, the, the, as he's talking, the movie would just cut over to a close-up of the Flotus's face nodding as you hide the fuck up. Yeah. They don't know about that so in this, this movie is edited like a podcast, just in the middle of the guy's sentence, everything will cut to like shift it ever so slightly to the right or left and him mid sentence saying the same thing, but right. <laughs> it's so great. And what's what well, they've clearly cut out because you can see he's glancing constantly off to the side of the screen. They've cut out where he had to pause for his reading to catch up with his speaking. <laughs> yeah. yes. and so they've just trimmed out those pauses and just sort of fade a little bit. So he looks like he's sort of just phasing around in the room. It's it's amazing. Cut to a close up of the coma president's face, eyes wide open. Wait, no, cut that. Cut that. Nope, cut that yep, can't do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, they like they cut him in between like the words he was ruthless and towards other people like that, that cuts midway through the t is insanity <laughs> they have a cut before any words happen at one point yep. somebody <laughs> walks up and <laughs> is like about to start speaking and then it's like boom and he's like slightly <laughs> off and then he's <laughs> speaking yep I, I believe that's because that? he just forgot his opening line they, they walked up there and he's like Oh shit, what's my line? And they had to cut that part out. <laughs> I thought he had to look around to see where the cue cards were. Mm -hmm. So he's just looking in different directions around the room until he settles on the cue cards. <laughs> so, he just walks up, your eyes are wide open. Cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> but then, so he leaves and then he comes back on, this time as an actual rabbi, right? This time he's supposed, is, again, supposed to be a different guy, but it's the same actor playing the part of a rabbi. He does the like Spock hands thing. Right. Is that a thing? I didn't realize that was a thing. He was talking about the, ch the chosen and he did the Spock hands thing. And this film made me Google, do Jews do Vulcan salutes? Which yeah. apparently is a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. No, Leonard Nimoy was, was Jewish and, and he, um, they, that's, that's where he got it. They don't do it like uh... this guy does it. Your thumbs are supposed to be together. Represents the letter Shin, the sacred flame of the Hebrew alphabet. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And, but this is where this movie just goes full anti-Semite. Right. Like, because the, the Jewish guy's like, yeah, you know, it was our money that made him president. And in exchange, he gave us the actual words of the movie. He gave us dual citizenship and yep. allowed us to infiltrate the highest levels of government. Yep. The armed forces, the secret service, the judiciary, his enemies say he betrayed his own people and sold his country to us. Jews. Yes. That's what it says. I will Jesus. now read 1,100 pages of David Icke verbatim. <laughs> Lizard aliens Jewish. Well, I, thought, done. I don't know that I feel comfortable watching this movie while Eli isn't here. Like, how is this movie making me feel complicit in a hate crime? How is it achieved? <laughs> right. <that? laughs> yes. And then, okay, so then he leaves. They give him another check. He leaves. And following the classic comedy rule of fours, he comes back in. <laughs> yeah. This time in blackface. Yes. Yeah, following the classic comedy rule of blackface four. Yep, <laughs> sure is. This is the definitely more problematic men in black thing that they do. They they tried to do like tannish face though, not quite. Right, like like they could face. make it better by being less black about it. It's rough. <laughs> it's so bad. But he comes in now. He's an imam, right? And he starts to do a prayer like a Muslim prayer over him. But when he says Allah, the Secret Service guys arrest him because he must be a terrorist. Yes. And this is where we first realized that for sure they meant for him to be different guys because the Catholic from before steps forward and says, oh, don't arrest him. You know, Allah is just their word for God. And then we're and, and then all of us have in our notes. Wait, is that is he supposed to be different guys each time? What? Yeah. In, in block capitals, we, that realization hits every one of us <laughs> at once. Yep. It's, it's amazing. And it seemed like for a second the movie was going to like make a good point. The guy was going to be like, no, actually, Allah, it just means God. Like, we're all talking about the same God. But then he's like, yeah. So, I mean, there's like way better arguments for Islamophobia. So just to be clear, don't don't use the like word Allah to be the crux of your anti-Islam argument. 
Yeah, well, so it, it's such a bizarre moment here. This is really one of the reasons why it took me so long to realize this was a Muslim film because he's, he, he gives us the, but there are bad and good Muslims thing, right? He gives us this whole thing about, well, yes, yeah, some Muslims believe that Mary was a whore and Jesus was a sissy boy that couldn't play basketball, but some Muslims believe that Jesus was the greatest of all prophets and really Christians shouldn't be upset about him at all, right? That's the speech that he gives here. Really fucking weird. It is, but it's couched in a really sort of bizarre way because it's just around the same time that someone says the line about like, you know, the guards, are, the guards arrest him. So oh, don't blame the guards. It's not easy to tell them apart, the different religious folks apart. And I thought, is this, is this movie on our side? Is this now an atheist movie <laughs> pointing out that all the religions are basically as silly as one another so you shouldn't just pick on the Muslims, pick on them all equally? But no, it's, it's saying, so don't pick on the Muslims be Muslim. That's yeah, the direction right, it's right. going. Exactly, yeah. But but the, 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 we're not going to get there yet because the Secret Service guys explain how it's okay. They can just drag him out in the street and shoot him to death and then like charge him with terrorism and child porn later. Specifically to say that he was wearing a suicide belt. Yes. Belt? Belt? Belt. <laughs> yep. When you only want to blow yourself up a little bit. You're not going right. to go the full hog yeah, yeah. of a full vest. <laughs> exactly. Vests are out this year, yeah. So... <laughs> So and now we cut to the goddamn president sitting at his dining room table. Sorry, this is so fucking weird because they've green screened him into this. Yes. Right. But it's into a room that they actually ha like he could have just been sitting in. Yes. And it's a room that I don't think we've actually seen or at least not from that angle. So it took no. me a while to figure out because it's not the hospital. It's his own house. Yeah, but okay. he'll continue talking like he can see everything in the hospital. Maybe the people that they rented that shitty house from were like, but you cannot go in the living room at all. Or the dining room. <laughs> you could so. take a still photograph of the living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's off the air, like the Airbnb listing? They just yeah. got the photo that was there. <laughs> Well, see, I like to think that they actually set the green screen up right in front of that room, right? And filmed it there. And they were with the intent of putting like heaven in the background or some ethereal cloudy plane type thing or whatever. And then they're like, yeah, we don't have those are all they all cost money, really. So are you green screening the thing behind the green screen? Oh, my God, we are. No, all right. No, we're just, we totally are. We're still going to do it. So, <laughs> So, but yeah, so we, we see him and throughout the rest of the movie, he'll just pop in periodically to chime in on what everyone else is saying around his comatose body, right? But the first time we see him, he's telling everybody that he doesn't believe in no Jesus or no heaven and all of these prayers for him are, are just silly. He only ever pretended to be Christian for votes. Then we go, so we're back at the hospital. The president is being wheeled into or out of some surgery or something. My note is, holy hell, are we just hearing every bit of that rattling gurney in this echoey hallway? <laughs> <laughs> and then we end up with, I. it's hard to say the weirdest scene in this movie, right? Like the, the mm. closing scene is obviously the weirdest, but the most disturbing scene, I think, is this one right here. Disturbing, absolutely. Yes, yeah. So, the president's friends, one of whom is played by the goddamn actor who plays the president, <laughs> are all in the hallway confronting the doctor from from the press conference about how rapey his his coma ward is. OK, yes. And this is the best coma ward there is because he says we're the best coma ward. We've got so many coma patients. We've got the most po coma patients of anyone any, like, ever anywhere. And I, I don't think you measure the quality of a hospital by how many coma patients. <laughs> I, I prefer the ones who aren't still in comas. Uh, they said they have 300 people 300 in their coma ward. Yeah. Them. They're yeah, like that's... doing like the matrix and like harvesting electricity <laughs> in this place. That's insane. The guy's like, my cousin was in a coma for 28 years. And I'm just like, how the fuck is that helpful, you story topping piece of shit? <laughs> and then one of the guys says, well, what about that girl that came in here and got pregnant while she was in a coma? Yeah. Yikes. But he doesn't say that in the kind of outraged way that anybody ought to say that. It's a very kind of throwaway sentence like you're just talking about. Like, yeah. what about that storm we had last week? Is that what about that comatose patient that got raped into pregnancy? Right, right. Yeah. It's like you're trying to order off menu or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the response is like throwaway nonchalant, too. It's like, oh, yeah, right. No, that, uh, that totally happened. We offered to kill that baby, though, but, you know, Catholics, right? Right. And the friends are all like, yeah, OK, that checks out. That checks out because Catholics, right? Totally. And then we really dig into this, 
right? Like the next seven minutes are just details about this terrible crime, right? They're like, I, one guy says the grandparents tried to give the baby to foster care because he's violent and slight. And they used, they just use the R slur here and slightly schmur schmur. They do use the R slur. Yeah. So I'm I'm all caps in bold and italics now with my what the fuck is happening. <laughs> right? And then the doctor tries to like explain it away. He's like, "Oh, come on. Who hasn't raped a coma patient yeah. at some point?" Specifically what he says is, "If you find a beauty queen in a coma just lying there offering no resistance, how long can a man resist?" It's like infinite amount of time if he isn't a rapist. This is not yes. this is not an excuse. And as if it wasn't terrifying enough, the doctor says at one point, like adds to this, that she was 15. Yeah. Yeah. So that's happening. And all of them are like, okay, but here's the important thing. Do we need to worry about that with the president? And we're skipping everything you just said otherwise. Yeah. yeah. And the doctor's like, oh, you want to know, like, will the POTUS get pregnant while he's in a coma here? No. no, no he's, <laughs> he's like a six at best. So like, I'm not <laughs> too worried Christ. about it. He says almost exactly what I just said. Yeah I, yeah, I wrote my notes. The president is totally not fuckable, so it's fine. It's completely yes. fine. Yeah. Yes, and then everybody's good. Wait, one of them points out, they're like, you know, it's weird that nobody ever got arrested. Did they never figure out who the rapist was? And the doctor says, <laughs> the doctor says, well, no, they figured out who it was from DNA testing, but they never charged him because he explained that everybody here is raping the coma patients. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like a Spartacus type situation. So <laughs> you couldn't really Christ. just, you know, figure out who at any given moment. Ah, you know. I mean, line from this scene verbatim, quote, for many perverts, getting a job in this coma ward is like going to heaven. That's an actual line that they say in the movie. And then the Flotus is like, well, we want to make sure that my husband doesn't get raped. So we're, we want you to put in cameras, you know, anti-rape cameras. And then the doctor says, well, you know, we don't have the budget to do that because your husband vetoed the law that would have made anti-rape cameras mandatory in all coma wars when he was president. What That's such a specific law side <laughs> have they landed on? Are they both sides know. in sexual assault of coma? What the fuck is happening? It's it's an incredibly specific law. I mean, in fairness, that law absolutely nailed it. This is exactly what was going on here. It was a law yeah. that was required for the level of specificity. Fair play to that that legislator. You've absolutely nailed it. But <laughs> that's not normally a concern for hospitals, to my knowledge. If you're gonna land somewhere one time, you gotta you gotta land on a side for this one. You gotta land on a yep. side. Movie. Yes. Fuck. All right. Well, I'll admit that right after the rape apologist scene is an awkward place to cue the skit, but I also need a minute to reset my goddamn brain. So we'll be back in a flash with even more of the president goes to heaven. Right through here, Father. Ah, uh, yes, yes. This is, is this your comatose friend Eli? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, and and how do you two know each other? We uh we actually co-host a podcast together. A podcast is that um is that like a job? It's um kind of. All right. Well, then uh, here we go with the last rites. Uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> well. I suppose when you're in a coma, things happen that aren't under your control. We don't have to let it interfere with the uh, with the sanctity of the. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh dear. Uh, well, that's <laughs> that one's going to be pretty hard to ignore. It's a little. Uh, it's a, uh, but, but, but let us continue. Um, <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of. You know, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe we could just do this from the hallway. Please, Father, uh, Father, this is so important to him. The last thing he said before he slipped into a coma, was please make sure there's a Catholic priest right there beside me at the end. I, I see. But hold on a second. Is your friend really a Catholic? <laughs> no, man, no, no, he's not dying either. So, oh, so you're just, you're just, you're just fucking with just me? Really fucking with you, yeah, yeah. Wait, so his flatulence always smells like that? Pretty much, yes. And you're and you're sure he's not dying? I mean, uh. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, podcast listener, just cutting in with a quick reminder that if you were a patron, this would actually be only one of the GAM episodes you got this week. Every month we do a full-length patron-only bonus episode, and to kick off 2023, we caved to the patron pressure and took on the movie so bad it broke the DC Cinematic Universe Black Adam. Check out a quick taste of what you're missing. I'm going to go t- take a shit, <laughs> I have to take a shit. in the Times Square. <laughs> Everybody look <laughs> away. <laughs> we spent eight fucking minutes on info dump at the beginning of this movie, and then we start not knowing what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I feel like I do well in movie universe. They'd be like, hey man, you're just liar pausing. All well, you're the time. obviously you must the bad guy. The double crossing bad guy. <laughs> Next to a Mexican elbow. <laughs> DC, like the humorless Coke bro that it is, is like, no, this is very serious. We have to get <laughs> him to say boopy boopy scoop scoop scoop. <laughs> oh. It's always poop that does it for Eli. It always is. <laughs> So if you'd like to hear what Eli was losing his shit over and get instant access to over 70 other secular bonus movies that we've done over the years, head over to patreon.com slash godawful and pledge as little as a dollar an episode. That's patreon.com slash godawful. And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, this wasn't a 9-11 truther movie, but that's about to change. Uh, (laughs) And it's going to do so. You know how they haven't addressed 9-11 yet? Don't worry. (laughs) (laughs) They will now. So now we're going to have one of these bizarre, one of the many moments where we're sitting there wondering who's supposed to be able to hear who, right? Because the Flotus is having a conversation with the president and the president's like, as his coma ghost or whatever is talking back to her. And it's never entirely clear if she can hear him. Is she? Okay. I I was, my, my exact note was like, can the wife hear the coma ghost speech that we're getting right now? Yeah. Some characters can and some can't throughout the movie. But it's never clear. It's never nope. obvious who can hear him and who can't. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Do you have to be Muslim to hear coma ghosts correctly? Oh, maybe that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. That might just be the key. But yeah, so, but she's worried because the documents, so they, they don't talk about 9-11 in this movie. They they have their own version of it, which is one eleven. Get it? Okay. <laughs> Could they not get the rights to nine and eleven numbers? What the fuck happened? No, we 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 can afford eleven, but uh, nine is expensive. We're going. It's with actually jam. wanted nothing to do with us. Yeah. So it's Did someone copyright the September eleventh attacks? That seems in really poor taste. <laughs> or right? just yeah. September? They copyrighted yeah. September attacks. Legally distinct. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but so she starts talking. There's a lot of parts of this where they like because they change Saddam Hussein's name to Gotham for reasons that are completely opaque as well. Right. That'll come up. But there's a couple of times where they just change names for no goddamn reason. Rock Gotham Obama. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, so the but the Flotus is worried because the documents about the 111 attacks were leaked and he may or may not have culpability it will not really be clear until there are three minutes left in this movie right yeah so the the movie is saying that the u.s government did 9-11 as an inside job yes but that's yes good i think so the movie lands on that's part of like allah's plan because it's not clear that they dislike that yeah, no, they eventually will be very much against the 9-11 attacks, but they make you wait. <laughs> oh, this is, of course it makes sense. Oh, so okay, he's, this is, no, this is just good writing. They're just building the moment for me. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. This, this movie exists to exonerate the entire religion of Islam from any association with 9-11. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, right, right, yeah, exactly. If they did it, then then Islam didn't. So, yeah, so we, we cut to him sort of just... You know, speaking off the cuff as a coma ghost about one eleven and about David Kelly. Yes, the the, the weapons inspector. Yes, yeah, David <laughs> Kelly. Obviously, yes. he was going to cope in this uh, film. The Welsh weapons inspector who, after failing to find WMDs in Iraq, 
killed himself. He did, yes. At some point. Yeah. Now, that's a real thing that happened, not in the way that this movie explains it, but... Well, the, the way that this movie explains it is that he didn't find weapons in 9-11 and then the next day was found dead. But, I mean, it doesn't matter because this movie's wrong about everything, but it wasn't the next... It was five months of being, like, intensely in the spotlight and under immense pressure for right. a guy who was yes. not capable of handling that pressure. So it, it wasn't the next day, but that seems like a... It feels like a weird thing to quibble about the timeline of David Kelly's death in this film. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, given the scale of wrong that we're going to be dealing <laughs> exactly. with. Exactly. Also, also, the fact that, like, he didn't find it and then the next day he did... Like, what, the day after he didn't do something... <laughs> that just seems that seems weird. Like he didn't find him the day before he died, too, I guess. There's also this weird just throwaway line where they start talking about how the president starts talking about how they killed in this world. They killed Saddam Hussein Gotham and they cut off his head and brought it to him on a literal silver platter. Yep. Right. The bit is supposed to be that he said, I want his head on a silver platter, but the government took it seriously. And he's delivering that like an after dinner speech, like it's a, an anecdote that he'd tell, you know, for money, just yes. on, the, on the on the on the after dinner circuit. It's like, yeah, you know, I asked for the guy to be beheaded, and you'll never guess what they actually did. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, we have fun. <laughs> I'm George W. This is funny. Yeah. He also he says at one point he says they cut his head off with a wire cutter. I think they meant a wire, like a garrote, right? <laughs> but yes. he said a wire cutter, which opens like an inch and a half. So you just got to imagine that took all goddamn day. <laughs> you know, you have a pocket knife and you have the little can opener thing. I tried that for a bit. <laughs> it was going to be a while. Tried the tweezers. They broke. And then the nurse comes in, right? The Because the, the, the first lady is still talking to the president's coma ghost or not. We don't really fucking know. But the nurse comes in. And she's like, hey, I'm here to change his diaper. You'll have to come back in two hours. Two, two hours? hours. <laughs> two hours? <laughs> Seriously? But the thing is, the frequency with which the president shits in this film, in two hours' time, he's going to be shitting again. So it's just, right, yeah, it's, like, honestly. it's like painting a bridge. You know, you, you, you get to one end and you've got to start back at the start and paint away. Also, it's been a few days. I feel like coma patients are mostly peeing after maybe like a day, two, right? Think. Is there a lot of shitting in comas? This, this film forced me to go on a, a Google journey to look into that particular detail. Apparently, they, deal, they do still do, you still need a bag, essentially, but not every two hours. Okay, no, withdrawn. This is a good part of the movie. <laughs> we all learn. Scientifically accurate. From this film. Okay. So the first lady leaves so that this nurse can do the two-hour diaper change. And she explained the nurse tells him that the mothers of dead soldiers are outside and they blame him for 111 and the war that came after. Right. Right. So they they say that, but they describe the mothers of dead soldiers by the acronym MODS. Yes. And I thought, hang on, the MODS are the mothers of dead soldiers. I really want to ho hope that they're all there on like Lambretta scooters, wearing Parker jackets, <laughs> listening to the kinks. And it, I, I went too British again, didn't I? Damn it, I went too British. <laughs> I think I got that though. Nice. Oh, quadrophenia. They're like the opposite of greasers in, in British culture. Uh, rockers. Yeah, it was MODS and rockers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, I didn't. So thank you for the translation. <laughs> And then we cut to the friends, the president's friends all sitting in the room with the president getting kicked out so that she can change his diaper again. <laughs> yeah, again. So, so there's another two hours. It's such a weird because like the, all the friends are sitting in there and they're listening to a radio that we can't see, a radio that's off camera that's talking about the 111 document leak. And she comes in and talks at the same volume of the radio. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And tells us that he's that she has to change his diaper and they need to leave for two hours again. But I'm pretty sure in real life, nurses are generally more tactful than saying, hey, could you guys fuck off? I need to check if your comatose friends shat himself again, which is basically <laughs> what she says. I feel like this had to be the guy in real life just shitting a lot. Right. Oh, 100 percent. Absolutely. 100 percent. Yeah. No, he's a method actor. Yeah. So all the friends go outside, they sit in the waiting room and they all talk about how convincing they find the various 9-11 conspiracy theories. So they do, but they don't say anything about the actual conspiracy theory. So they, they only ever say it. Yes. They spend a lot, a lot of time talking about it. What do you think about it? We know the president organized it. What do, what do you make of it? Well, this is what I make of it. And I thought, what it are you talking about here? This is not helpful. Could you just give me one noun to work with? <laughs> You know what I make of uh, not copyrighted some month 11th attacking? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, but I did enjoy that there was one guy in their stupid group that did not have to be that big. So they definitely did not have to have the same guy be the president and his extra friend that he wanted to have. <laughs> but one guy in that group, while they're arguing, he's like, guys, okay, I feel like you're making up conspiracy theories. Couldn't our friend the president just murder Saddam Hussein Gotham and not do 9-11, both of those? And they're just like, shut the fuck up, nerd, boo. Yeah, so right. And they move right on. But so this and this is such a weird exchange because it, it starts off with the friends all talking about 9-11 in the waiting room. And then we cut to the ghost president, the coma ghost president, explaining that he wasn't actually involved in 9-11, but he did know about it. Right. It was it was a lie hop, not a my hop type situation. Yeah. And this is being interspersed with a conspiracy theorist on a computer screen <laughs> wearing that same blonde wig again. Uh huh. Talking about 9-11 conspiracy theories. Yeah, and this conspiracy theorist is played by apparently Holly from Red Dwarf because he's just a black, he's just a floating head on a black background with black underneath. Yes. Who's just reciting the script to lose change for reasons that are not at all clear. I don't know why we, we just, because it's not like we can see that he's on a computer screen. We just cut to him. And then cut back to coma. Well, so sorry, I, I, I want to correct you on that just a little bit, Marsh, because at first we do see that he's on a computer screen. And I have to bring that up because they don't know that you're supposed to take the plastic film off of your fucking monitor when you start using it. So it still <sighs> has the plastic film all over the top of it. I just I, I was delighted by that. <laughs> it's like a condom is for safe, safe. Movie, honey. You have to keep so it. I don't get computer virus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my favorite part of this, though, is the Loose Change movie is playing, but the guy talking in the Loose Change, he, it, the movie stops itself whenever Coma Ghost talks to himself in Coma Realm about what he was just looking at right. on the screen. No, like in my notes, I've written like, wait, is the ghost president talking to the 9-11 conspiracy <laughs> YouTube video now? Yeah, and, and yes. yes, 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 it is. <laughs> which actually makes more sense than what was happening at first in my head. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does. And he, not only is he making more sense, he's doing a pretty good job of debunking the 9-11 conspiracy theory. <laughs> and it made me write my notes, is is this a skeptical film? Because we don't want this. Can we throw this right. back? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> On behalf of skepticism, we officially disavow this film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But the movie just keeps it throws out all of this like, you know, loose change red meat. Right. You know, it, it says, well, you know, what about building seven that didn't or they they get they say building three because they couldn't get rights to building seven. Apparently, <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was very weird what they chose to change and didn't. And they talk about the guy who bought the Twin Towers right before that. And wow, he took insurance out against terrorism. What are the odds? You know. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the the thermite, they bring up the thermite, the idea that they rigged the thing with explosives beforehand and pretended that they were internet cables, right? All of that just gets thrown against the goddamn wall in like a 15 minute span out of nowhere, never to return. So that's, that's true. Although they don't talk about internet cables, they talk about internet cabling. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is the first time this actor has ever heard the word internet, which yes. I think in my gen, I do genuinely believe it was. I think I could actually see that in him. Like, yeah, you've never seen or heard of the internet at any point yes. before. <laughs> you had to read it in this script. So then, okay, so then we get, again, it's hard to say any scene is the most useless in this movie, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, is this fucking weird. So we get the daughter, the president's daughter, again, very much English is not this woman's first language, right? <laughs> She's coming to the hospital with two children of radically different ethnicities and accents themselves. <laughs> yeah. And to be clear, the president and the first lady are white, white, white people from fucking Minnesota. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And they had allegedly a daughter from Spain with a Spanish accent <laughs> who has a a very white husband and they had two children from like two entirely other different ethnicities and parts of the world. Yes. Yes. One of them yeah. is Romanian. I think. Yeah. So, it, and, and, and apparently they have a third kid too, right? Cause they're like, you know, we also, we didn't bring little brother because he's violent and he tears things to pieces. And we're like, are we ever going to hear about this child again? Is he ever going to factor into the story in any way? They're like, no, we just wanted to talk mm -mm. about what a piece of shit our other kid was. Yeah, for the duration of those lines and then never again. We don't even acknowledge the existence of that child any other time. 
Yep. Just as the next thing she says is that she's going to a bachelor party, but she's given up alcohol and she's been sober for three days now. None of this matters. None of this will ever be referenced again, apart from in the, this one bit of conversation that she says it once and then it's gone into the wind. But but that's true of everything in this movie. Like all but yeah. one of the things, right? Because the raped girl from the Coma Ward, she never shows back up. And with like the, the, over and over again, this movie will be like, you know, let's spend about eight or nine minutes setting up something that will then disappear and never be heard from again unless there's a fucking sequel. <laughs> Just like 9-11. Yeah, right. So, and by the way, while the president's family is is there visiting him on the TV at approximately the same volume as the dialogue from the family is a documentary about how the president did 111, right? And the scene actually ends with the son and well, sorry, the the granddaughter leaves because he smells like shit. Yes, he shouts okay, again. Yeah. Th this is the best part of the movie. <laughs> they're like trying to they're trying to the, the, like the Alex Jones channel is playing conspiracy theories and they're trying to like talk about it. Every half sentence she's like dad shot himself again. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing with that conspiracy theory. Alex Jones actually like, smells so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> And then one of them notices that coma, coma president moved his finger. And they actually, this is like a big deal. The family would be like, holy shit, he moved his finger. I care it's so bad. I can taste it in my teeth. He shot himself. <laughs> and that's the end of the scene. Well, yeah. The daughter says she, he smells too bad that she never wants to see him again. That's right, an yes. incredible level of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love the moving finger thing because, because like the nurse throws a CD, or I think they throw a CD at his hand. I don't know yes. why they throw a CD at his hand, but they throw a CD, CD at his hands and said, oh, and his finger moved. But like, one, you threw something at his hand and his finger moved. That's not necessarily a sign of recovery. But also, two, we were looking at his finger. It definitely did not move. We were, on, we were trained I, to this picture. <laughs> I, I rewound this and watched it over again three fucking times because I'm like, could you not get the rights to fingers moving? Why would you? <laughs> the guy is right there. You could have just asked him. He would have said yes. His eyes are wide open. Just right. show those. He can see. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So then we head to the latest press conference from Doc and his sidekick. They're still taking turns answering the questions, but they explain about the finger thing. Yeah, they're, they're telling all the crowd of all of seven people that the president has uh, successfully moved his hands. But they also say we couldn't duplicate the movement. And I assume that's because they ran out of CDs. So like we only had one. <laughs> it, it went like under the door to the, to the locked room and we couldn't get it back. So, yeah. We had one, but it, we ran out of the 50 hours, so we weren't sure if it would still <laughs> work it's, it's, on the internet. Yep. <laughs> yes, yeah. But then, and talk about setting up shit that's never going to fucking pay off. <laughs> this is where they introduced the fact that there's been unusual brain activity from the president because he was angry about a mosquito that he could hear. And then they tell us that they might be able to use electrodes to hooked up to his vocal cords to translate his thoughts into words and they'll be able to hear his thoughts. This will come up about six more times and they'll never actually do it. <laughs> yeah, like apparently they've got the technology to turn electrical signals into speech. They can't record audio on a film without their cell phones clipping it out, but they can <laughs> mind read coma patients. <laughs> they can record the thoughts of coma patients, yes. Okay, all that was happening, they were talking about it. I was just focused on the large group of nurses in the background playing charades. <laughs> so fucking hard in the background because they're, you know, not supposed to talk over it. So they're like playing leapfrog and like <laughs> pieing each other in the face. It's crazy. Yeah. So and then we, we cut over to the float as she's chatting with the comatose president. She explains that she's given all of the stuff in the garage to the presidential library, but they can't open that wooden box that he was trying to get into when he had his stroke. This will be very important. It'll be yeah, semi semi important. But like, I, I love the fact that that, that she's emphasising they can't get into this wooden box. This wooden box is impossible to get into. And then she goes, "Or oh, I guess they could just break it." Like, yeah, yeah, I guess that <laughs> yeah, is also it's an wooden. <laughs> it's so you know, yeah. And so okay, so then we cut to this next scene where the uh, there's a secret service agent. He's coming in and he's telling the president, the comatose president. First of all, we got a, a very uncomfortable up taint shot for this for this scene here, <laughs> right? But the, the Secret Service agent comes in. He says, hey, man, we've killed the or sorry. He says the last 111 witness died of natural causes. 
which he explains are that they sent him an anthrax letter. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. But they also say that, you know, we, we killed him. You know, he'd been on the speaking circuit for a while. Right. So it's, it's pointless killing them now then. Right. <laughs> like, you know what they say? It doesn't matter how many people the witness has told before you kill them, as long as you eventually kill them. And that's how you yes. stop the truth getting out. <laughs> right. Yes. He says, the coroner doesn't suspect a thing. And I'm like, did he work at an anthrax factory? Why would the coroner not? <laughs> this doesn't make any fucking sense. But okay. And then we cut to the doc. He's in the middle of surgery and the floatus has come in to interrupt him and, and yell at him about the president's health. So he says to one of the attendings at the surgery, hold the veins. Do, uh, to go and speak to the floaters. Just hold the veins. What a, what a psychotic line to say do about you, the surgery. You just bend it like a hose. It's cool. Right. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So he walks over to the, to the first lady in, just in the corner of the operating room and explains that the president's kidneys have failed and he needs a new kidney if he's going to come out of this okay. Yeah, and at this point, she basically asks to see the kidney menu. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, we have this, the maybe the hardest to decode what side is the movie on moment, right? Where she's like, well, bump him to the top of the kidney waiting list. And he's like, well, actually, it's illegal to bump somebody to the top of the kidney waiting list just because they're rich and famous. Mm. Your, your husband actually made that illegal while he was president. Is he a bad guy or a good guy? I, I don't know. No. I have no idea. Th this was the moment where I'm like, okay, guys, I'm out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are they, so like, I could see either, I could see this movie being like pro-libertarian free market kidney anarchy. Just, just oh maybe warlords selling kidneys <laughs> harvesting kidneys whatever god jesus you know don't tread on me i d yeah right i, I it, that is as likely an interpretation of this message as any other fucking interpretation you could come up with job creators but yeah but the doctor explains that you know but they can bypass the waiting list without telling anybody and the fucking floatus says and i quote I hope you're not talking about harvested organs of executed Chinese prisoners. Fucking what? Yes, they are. Which is very specific. Super specific. That's intensely specific. Because <laughs> this is when he said, he said, you know, the only alternative would be to bring in some kidneys from another country. And it's like, some kidneys? Are, are foreign kidneys worthless? Like, what's the exchange rate? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get a metric kidney and you try to put it into an American, you have this as yeah, you Yeah, if you go adjust. back to Italy long enough, it's like it takes a thousand kidneys for a single American <laughs> kidney. That's why they went to the European kidney standardized system. See, this is why we need trade agreements to just be, there's now there's arbitrage of kidneys, but we're for that because of some reasons, but we're against it for others. Oh. But they do land on, yes, foreign kidneys are worth less. Oh, God. And this is where she says that I don't want the organ of a criminal in my husband's body. Yes. It's like, you should have thought of that before you admitted him to the rape coma award, lady. That oh, ship has sailed not. long ago. <laughs> it's your fault. So, also, apropos of nothing, during this conversation, the doctor says, well, you know, a couple of Jewish rabbis were caught in New York trying to sell organs. And the floatus is like, correct. That <laughs> is the thing that happened. <laughs> End of scene. And then we cut to, and again, it's hard to call anything the most confusing scene in this movie, but, <laughs> but this might have been it. Okay, because we cut to this, di this different nurse. The nurse that had been coming in to change his diaper up until now has been an African-American woman. This is a white lady. She comes in and she's got the diapers and she throws the diapers to the side and she's like, I'm not going to change your diaper because my dad was a firefighter and he died in 111 and it's all your fault and you can just, you, you can just be sitting in a big pile of your own filth and shit for the rest of time for all I care. Okay. This is supposed to be the same nurse. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be. Is it? Yes. Here's the thing. Regardless of their casting thing, which is insane, <laughs> this means they think that like this nurse came in and was like giving an angry speech about how her dad died in 9-11. She feels like the president was responsible for that. And she brought a big pile of diapers with her yes. just to throw them away as a dramatic prop during her speech for a coma victim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, right. And later on, the African-American nurse will start telling him my father was a firefighter. So either both of them coincidentally had firefighter dads who died in 9-11 or this is supposed to be the same character and they were just like, eh, you, nobody will notice she was a nurse. 
nurse is a nurse. We don't see race right. <laughs> or religion in this movie. We don't see same people. So, okay. So sometime later, the, doc, the Flotus barges into another operating room to talk with the doctor. She just fucking bursts into operating rooms like the Kool-Aid man. There's no, there's no <laughs> holding her back. <laughs> so, so she's like, you know, you said in your report that my husband had brain damage. Take it back. And he's like, no, I'm just making a clinical diagnosis. I'm, I'm just not throwing out schoolyard insults here. She goes, oh, oh, well, give him experimental treatment to fix him. Right. Right. And this is where he explains that the only thing that would help him now is stem cell treatment, but he made that illegal while he was president. Yeah. So is this movie pro stem cells now? I think so. Yes. Oh, you think they're, do you think they're pro stem cell? I don't, I, like, I don't know. I, I, I also think they're pro raping 15 year old coma. It's confusing stuff. too. So it's, yeah, right, right. The way the doctor describes it, he's like, yeah, if you, you know, if you smush a fetus into his brain, he'll be fine. But that yeah. is not <laughs> legal here because your husband on moral Christian grounds banned stem cell research. Yes. Yeah. And, and he says, you know, that treatment is only available in China and Mexico. And the Flotus says, and again, sometimes I just I have to quote directly from the actual spoken words here. She says, quote, well, if third world countries have it, that's third world as in China and Mexico, <laughs> quote, we must have it. We must have it better, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> they've got stem cells better. That's what they've got. They've got stem cells yes. but better. <laughs> <laughs> So then we stumble cut. They invented their own kind of cut. It's called a stumble cut. We stumble cut. That cut is so tight, it's practically mid-sentence. She doesn't even get the <laughs> really last is. syllable out. <laughs> they managed to cut between the end of her word and the start of the full stop. It's that tight. <laughs> yeah, right, yes. So he, he cuts over to the doc giving another press conference about how the kidney transplant hasn't worked. Or actually, multiple kidney transplants have not worked. It was this third set of kidneys that Three. were rejected. Yeah. He, this, he's burned through six kidneys plus his yeah, own. Third, this is third an eight kidney press of kidneys. <laughs> yes. Right. And then one reporter's like, okay, that sucks. But can you give those kidneys to somebody else now? And the doctor answers no, but like, like he's refusing. Not like it's impossible, but just like right, he doesn't right. want to. Like, no, can you do that? You. No. <laughs> no. No. The first lady actually licked them all. So you're actually not allowed. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> so, so yeah, so the catch, uh, the Flotus catches up with the doctor later and, and she's like, you know, give him the treatment. He's like, well, he'd have to go to China or Mexico, but he's too weak to move. And the, the Flotus says, well, this is problematic because the news has already reported that innocent kids in occupied countries are being killed for their kidneys. And I'm like, are they really? <laughs> <'Cause-> <laughs> Fair play to that news team. They are on it. Yeah, Do you think right. it's the same guy from Channel 69? <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want him doing the undercover investigation in China into the illegal organ trade in a really sort of bouncy way like a Labrador. <laughs> So yeah, so but the but the doctor explains that if he doesn't get the stem, stem cell therapy, he could have any number of soap opera maladies. Right? He goes on this long list of potential things that could happen, but he opens up on all the like daytime drama shit. <laughs> there was an identical twin involved somehow. Yeah, so, the- what? <laughs> with amnesia. And then the Flotus explains at this point, she's like, well, you know, I think he would rather be dead than in a state like that. And they're like, amnesia? And like, she's like, yes, all of the states that you just described. The first state that he, he described, though, was he might wake up and be fine. <laughs> yes. so like, yeah, he'd rather be dead than that. And like, given that we've what we've seen in the president's life, she might still have a point, even if he what? does wake up and be fine. Like, yeah, she, yep. I mean, he's he's been constantly shitting himself in front of all of his friends for at least a few, for at least eight kidneys worth of yeah. kidneys. <laughs> so, yeah, so she's like, he would rather die than then live like that. I want him euthanized. And the doctor's like, I'd love to help, but he made physician assisted suicide illegal while he was president. Again, no idea which side the movie is on at this point. Right. So, and she's like, but she's very insistent, right? She's like, no, I don't want his enemies to laugh at his infirmities. Therefore he must die. <laughs> and the doctor's like, all right, so um, I can't help. Whatever you do though, don't go back to his room and, Turn the dial on the bottom left side of the ventilator all the way to the right and then pinch the IV line at the same time. 
And he, he explains so many different ways of killing him. I, right, there's I, a bunch of oars. Yeah. Just yeah. stay in this uh, this scene. And he's a long like, list. don't suspend a giant piano above his uh, <laughs> above, above his bed. Got it. And then set up a trip wire in the door handle so that when the nurse comes in to change his diaper, he gets smooshed. Don't do that. No trip wire. Got it. <laughs> Don't let him just keep shitting and die of diaper rash. Definitely <laughs> right, don't uh, yeah. do that because that would kill him. So they, so we cut to the Flotus murdering him. Now, it, look, it, look, don't get me wrong. I am all for physician-assisted suicide, but on someone else's behalf, because they might be mentally impaired to an as yet unknown degree, that's just killing the motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's George <laughs> W. Bush here, though, so I was on board. Well, okay, right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So she's in the middle of like cutting his tube with a pair of scissors. And she's also adjusting the ventilator like she's trying to tune in a shortwave radio to catch right. the game or yes. something. Yeah. Okay. The nurse comes. Yeah. The nurse comes in here and is like, hey, are you, you have like a giant pair of scissors like you're doing a grand opening on a ribbon ceremony and you're cutting his breathing tube. Are you doing a murder? <laughs> and first lady's like, yes, I'm doing a murder. Yes. Yes, she immediately, she's just like, hush, I'm trying to kill my husband. My God, lady, you're making so much noise. And the nurse is just like, she's got this, well, I'm very disappointed in you kind of reaction to it, right? Right, but then she calls a cold blue. Like, we've got a cold, cold blue. And cold blue presumably is called for immediately hard cut to a press conference where someone's explaining that the president's fine now. In like the least dramatic tension ever captured on film, we cut straight to, anyway, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yes. He's all good. <laughs> right. Don't want you getting all worked up over this. Yeah. It's more like a code lilac. It's pretty relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cornflower blue. It's code cornflower the blue. soft color. So, <laughs> yeah, instead of show us, don't tell us, this movie opted for show us you telling us, right, with this press conference <laughs> bullshit. But they tell him like, yeah, he died for a minute, but he was revived. And the press conference, the 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 media that's at the press conference immediately says, did his wife kill him with a giant pair of novelty scissors? And they're like, what? No, what? No, that's not what happened at all. It was a different thing. <laughs> also, there's three doctors there who are there to not answer questions. They said, we can't yes, answer questions yes. this time. Then, yeah. then why did you bring three doctors to not answer? Oh, they had trouble with two on the rotation, and now it's right. three. <laughs> Some yeah. lady we've never met before, doctor, she jumps in at one point, and everybody's like, oh, we're doing we're doing a three-way rotation. You're fucking brand new. You don't even go here. We Whatever. were doing... All right, no, you, you answer this one. We're doing evens and odds. What the fuck are we doing now? It's <laughs> one of the few things they do say, though, is that the president is fine. He's breathing on his own at this time. So, right, so he's he's not in a coma anymore, than a, is he? Because I thought comas, you're always on a ventilator. Can you, call, <laughs> can you breathe on your own? He wasn't breathing on his own before. She was cutting the ventilator tubes. Right. Did they just find out, oh, shit, he didn't need that all this time. Yeah. But we never <laughs> bothered checking. getting it. better. Way better. Yeah, so, okay. Then we cut to that nurse that came in during the murder attempt <laughs> getting a phone call. This I love this so goddamn much, right? Because she picks up the phone, she goes, hello? Speaking, really? Oh no! Oh dear! That's very bad. Thanks for the call. <laughs> but love to mom. Bye. Right? <laughs> okay. Again, just calm down. It was like, oh no, oh no, yeah. So, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Actually, oh yeah. My so God. very sad. It was like me Thank explaining, you. like, oh, we're actually at a ranch here at TGI Fridays today. We're eating six ranch. <laughs> Very I can't get you nine that. ramekins of ranch for your disgusting salad that you're going to have that <laughs> will then have ranch on it and be worse. So, yeah, so she explains. So she this, she's at work, right? So she turns to the doctor and this orderly and she's like, that was um, the police calling. Apparently, I let a coworker borrow my car and then somebody carjacked her, murdered her and then crashed the car. Yes, I, I think it was even, it sounded like the, the colleague had stolen her car. It sounded like it, like her car had been stolen by a colleague who was then shot by a random stranger. Carjacked, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, 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 yeah, leave it to this movie to add yet another unnecessary complication. But what we're supposed to get from this is that the first lady is trying to have her killed because she witnessed the murder attempt, right? And the orderly is like, oh, you know, you should just fake your own death. You should pretend like... <laughs> Like you died <laughs> straight to it. And the doctor's like, actually, yeah, that is a very good. So you're faking good your idea. own death yeah. at this point. It would just be, that would be, that would be nailing it. But before you do go and fake your own death, just go and change, the change that diaper. diaper it's been yes. like 15 what? minutes. There's probably a lot of yeah. shit in that room. I think they refer to that as a cold brown. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
So and and look and and they will all agree. They'll be like, "Yep, you should fake your own death, pretend that you died in that car accident, so they don't come after you again." And then the entire movie will carry on with her not having done that. Yes, right, because she'll just be the nurse still for the rest of the film. Oh, and specifically because she says this to the president when she goes to see them. She's specifically the duty nurse. <laughs> and I realized yes. the makers of this movie must have misheard duty nurse for duty nurse. <laughs> and that's why they assume okay. the nurse only changes diapers. That's got, that's got to be what happened, that's right? That's got to be real. Like, not yeah. at all a joke. That must have been what That happened. must have been it. Well, they've got a duty. <laughs> apparently, there's loads of duty nurses in, uh, in hospitals. So we'll, we'll have one in our film. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she she comes in to like not change his diaper apparently to fake changing his diaper or whatever, and she says, "Is that movement in your eyes?" And I'm like, "Yes, his eye. He's been clearly <laughs> blinking through this entire <laughs> fucking movie, right?" And she's like, "Oh, well, maybe you can hear me. You remember all those people that you murdered at and in one eleven? One of them was my father." And this is where we're all like, "Wait, that was a white lady who said that." Wait a minute. Yeah, one of them was my father, George Santos. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and she says, I have something for you. It's a CD, a DVD. Those are, those are different, <laughs> different things. It's two different. It's a circle thing. I don't it's know. A, it's a it's fucking 53 circle. hours on it. Um, it's so. an MP3. Zero, one, one, zero, one, one. If that's what it is. <laughs> So she says it's a it's a five year old multilingual a mom that is going to tell you a bunch of stuff about Muslim stuff on a loop for the rest of your life. Why did she have a copy like a CD copy of the kindergarten Quran? I don't like, know. Why would she be carrying that with her? Yeah, she's not Muslim. We're going to find out later in the movie that she's definitely not Muslim. So I don't goddamn know. And we there's nothing about the speaking five languages either. This is such a cool character. This is like the only interesting character they have is this five year old imam who speaks five languages. No, yeah, we don't get any of that. No, we get the English. Yeah, not a damn leg. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Quick, before this morphs into a story about the comatose president becoming a Muslim, and yes, that is indeed where we are going. I feel like it's time for a seventh plot stretch. So let me give Act Three the hard sell. Why did Eli do this to us? Weren't we all friends? What hath God wrought? Find out the answer to different questions that are almost entirely unrelated to anything that we've seen up to this point in the movie and more when we return for the cacophonous conclusion of The President Goes to Heaven. My father was in the New York Fire Department on 9-11. You murdered him. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I was, I was just changing my shirt. So, you know, when you're changing shirt, you can't really hear. What were you saying? You were, you were changing your shirt in the, in the coma realm? Yeah, in the coma realm. How do you think we're talking right now? Yeah, I'm in the coma realm. Right. Yeah, obviously. Um, as I was saying, you killed my father on 9-11. Sorry, sorry, just grabbing slippers. Uh, my toes were kind of cold. Back in a second. So you can't hear me when you go in the other room of the coma realm? Not really. It's, it's further away in that realm. So just a second, just a second. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. You did 9-11. Now you have to listen to the Quran on DVD CD. What? No, absolutely. You can't make me. Yes, I can. Hitting play. In the name of God, Allah. The come on, stop it. Stop it right now. Praise be to God. Too late. Lord of the world. Come up, please. Ah, how is this working anyway? Judgment. DVD we CD realm technology. What? Okay, just help. please stop it. Guide stop it. Upon the no, path. turn it off. The this is ridiculous. Stop resisting. Okay, that's it. I, I'm, I'm going limp and I'm shooting myself. Not of those in the coma realm. Uh, yes, it's both. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for even more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with the Flotus chatting with the assistant about trying to find that billion dollar code. And I don't know about you guys, but like I was. I was elated at this moment because I was like, oh, my God, they remembered a plot point that they'd introduced. <laughs> right. They gave me hope for the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but we spent a whole bunch of time establishing that the accountant who created this account died in a freak accident after the he created the account. And nobody could ever know what the code was except for the president. And they're very casual about the fact that he's dead. Like this movie ha generally has a very casual approach to life and death. Like people having died just does not raise an eyebrow to anybody at nope. any point in this. No one's surprised by it. No. They're also both barefoot. 
Why were they both barefoot <laughs> I in this moment? <laughs> I missed that. I guess they're casual. They're casual. Flotus is in her own house, but why is the assistant best? Right, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, th- this Airbnb was like, you're all taking your shoes off before you come inside. Absolutely <laughs> right, not. yeah, clearly. You only have this half, by the way. So, and then we cut to, we cut straight from there to the CDVD or whatever of the little, <laughs> this like 10 year old girl, Muslim girl, explaining to us that Muslims are a okay right? Because they're not filthy atheists. We spend, I'm going to say, so something like three fucking minutes with this girl just doing a monologue about how Islam is, is actually pretty cool if you give it a chance. Oh God, and she's so bored by this. Like She's clearly reading this off bits of paper just off screen. And even right. she is bored by this entire thing. But when it finished, what I really wanted was her to carry on and do the same speech again, but in like Farsi or Arabic. And just like yeah, right. They said five languages. languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody runs in and tackles the TV. Sorry, I heard. Okay. Shoots it. It had a suicide yeah. belt. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's there's some weird shit in this video, right? Like she's, basically she gives us the look at the trees apologetic, right? At length. Yeah. And then she wants to clear up a few things. She explains that the 64 virgins thing, that's nonsense. That doesn't happen. Because human spirits are non-binary. There are no men or women when you get to heaven. And... They have no memory of their life on Earth. So that so they're not you. <laughs> oh, okay. Good job. I, I was like, so you have an ergo? You have something after ergo there. Good job, Mom. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> She's like, do you want your soul to burn in hell forever? I'm like, well, if it's a blank slate where my fucking personality used to be, why the fuck would I care? <laughs> sure. Ask whoever I would be then. It's very much like worrying what happens to your plates after you finish the meal and they go back into the kitchen. It's like, I don't, they're not my plates anymore. It doesn't matter. It's got, it's got <laughs> right, no yes. trace of my food on it anymore. Exactly. Why would I care? <laughs> you guys bring in Ecolab? It doesn't matter. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And okay, but this is when Coma Ghost President yes. becomes a Muslim. Instantly. Because of this. He turns Muslim based on her look at the trees argument. Yes. Question. Does that count during a coma? I don't think it should count. It totally does. It it obviously does. Because not only does it count, but a magical Muslim angel lady appears. Mm. Well, I'm pretty sure the little girl steps out of the DVD CD like the ring and is now a grown woman in the hospital room. Yeah, becomes someone else. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. (laughs) Could also be that. And it's so funny because like suddenly there's this woman cla- uh, you know, dressed all in white that's standing in the corner of his room talking to him about the truth of Allah. And I assumed, as I'm sure you guys did, that she's supposed to be some kind of ghost or some kind of angel that only he can sense or whatever. But then the nurse comes in, the shit nurse, the duty nurse comes in and goes, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and I laughed for so long. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, you can see me? Because I just stepped out of a TV. I thought I was a ghost. I thought only the Muslim just now president could. Wow. Am I in regular realm? I thought I was in some other realm. Fuck. Okay. No, but I'm magical. I'm a magical Muslim lady. And the nurse is like, all right, bitch, going to test your Muslim magic or whatever. <laughs> she totally does. Yes. Let's yes. see if you can do any mentalism tricks right now for me. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? Literally, the literal. Because she said, "Well, she says I can talk to the president, even though he's in a coma." She's like, "Okay, well, what if I stand here where he can see behind my back and you can't, and (laughs) ask you how many fingers I'm holding up?" And we do that for a while. (laughs) Oh, it's so long. It's like two. It's one. Now it's three. And now you're doing a bunny rabbit. And now you're trying to do a bird, but you're only using one hand. So it's really unconvincing. Yeah. Like I didn't know you got amputee birds, but you're doing an amputee bird. She starts with how many fingers and magic Muslim lady's like two. She's like, okay, fuck. Well, you know, one in five. All right. What's in my hand now? And I was like, well, it kind of has to be nothing because like it wasn't now what's in your hand. And Muslim's lady's like nothing. Empty fist. She's like, wow. Okay. Yes. Right. And now I'm pretty convinced. Two thirds of the way to convincing me that you're a magic Muslim ghost. Now what finger? Middle finger. Fuck. Yep. Okay. I'm Muslim too. Got it. But I got all of those answers correct as well. So apparently <laughs> yeah. I am also an angel from Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was close, but on the second one, what was in her hand, I went for a massive pile of the president's shit. I thought he's got to work with what's in the room. <laughs> it's prominent. But, but apparently 
coma ghost president feels really bad about his complicity in 111. He didn't cause it, but he knew it was going to happen and he went along with it so he could stay president and he feels bad about it. And the reason he feels bad about it is because when he died, when his wife killed him for that second, he went to heaven, but then they wouldn't let him in and they showed him hell where all the people who actually made 9-11, all the my hop people were. Right. Is that what that was? Yep. Is that the president going to heaven, the eponymous heaven that the eponymous president goes to? Yes. I missed all of that. I, I tuned out because as he was speaking, his register got more and more incredulous to the point where I could no longer <laughs> pay any attention. He, he's got nowhere else to go in this register. This guy does not have the chops to keep going up like Let's that. Just <laughs> I gotta go down below. 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 Gotta start down. <laughs> but yeah, but he begged Muhammad for mercy and, and Mo said yes, but on the condition that he became a Muslim. Right? I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then well, this is also where we learned that that wooden box that he was trying to open, that the Secret Service was trying to get into, that wooden box has Gotham Hussein's head in it. That's what was in that box. In case you were curious, we finally wrapped up that storyline. Why does yeah. that get wrapped up? This Muslim ghost lady who crawled out of the TV, she does her mentalism trick. Everybody's Muslim, I guess. And she's like, oh, yeah, one more quick thing. He has the severed head of Saddam Hussein in a wooden box. Okay, poof. And she's gone for the, forever. That's the the whole scene. She Yeah, she disappears Batman style. Yes, as the, as the lady's looking the other way. But also, yeah, so what? He's got like, I don't know. Is that, I mean, yeah, it's meant to be shocking, but it was, surely the beheading bit was the shocking bit. The fact that he's got the head, like this doesn't resolve anything. No. This doesn't change anything about anything that's happened in this film. It's not a big shock or surprise. It's just like, oh, okay, I guess, fine. Yeah, right. It's got to be somewhere. So, okay. So then we cut to the float as harassing Doc in the parking lot. And she's like, hey, you know, we, we set up something earlier about you using electrodes to make my my husband's brainwaves talk to us like that can't have just been a throwaway line. Can it? <laughs> and he's like, no, there's no way to do that. The only way to communicate with him is maybe if you believe in spiritualists that can communicate with the dead. Now, to be clear, he's not dead. He's alive though. Yeah. He's, he's alive. <laughs> I wanted yeah. a spiritualist to come in and be like, Okay, I will speak to the no. He's I, I'm, his eyes are open. He's blinking. What do you? Why would you bring me in? <laughs> this is a very baffling scene for a number of reasons. So it's, it's baffling that we're we're in the car park at this point because mm -hmm. she she's harassing the doctor in the car park. This guy can't get a moment's peace. He's always the, uh, what I expect is that he's in the car park performing like an emergency tracheotomy, and she's interrupting <laughs> that because she only seems to talk to him midway through <laughs> operations. He's talking about how he's got a team of researchers who are inventing the mind reading machine. Yes, so. This chief surgeon in the trauma ward and coma ward of the hospital the world's large has a team of researchers yes. looking into mind reading. Yeah. And then, as baffling as that is, he gets a phone call and takes the fucking phone call in the middle of this scene while she stands four inches from his face, staring at his face the entire time. Well, he, he gets a bring. I have to take this. Hi, honey. You're talking to me now. You want me to walk away from whatever lady is bothering me right now? <laughs> okay, I'll do that. I have to go. I have to go. Bye. But they fuck that up, right? Because they're, they're yeah. like clearly going for that trope. But then he fit, we watch him finish the conversation, hang up the phone, and then look at her like, oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then just carry on. Just carry on with it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So, okay, so now we cut to the to the hospital cafeteria where apparently they're discussing. This took me a while to figure out because they're using the wrong gendered pronouns here. But they're back at the hospital cafeteria talking about the ghost Muslim lady. Oh, no, no, they're not, are they? I, yes, they're talking yeah. about he he did this, he did that. I thought they were talking about mediums and, sh uh, and things and calling them charlatans. Like, because in the previous scene, they were talking about, we need a medium to talk to him. Right. And then they start discussing the medium who came in and was doing just chicanery and tricks. And I thought, have they cut out the scene with the medium in? And we're just <laughs> going to analyze something we didn't see happen? No, no. So they specifically talk about the fingers, the, the nurse holding up the fingers behind her back and everything. It's just that they hadn't filmed that scene yet and apparently thought that they were going to get a guy to do that scene and ended up getting a woman to do it. Right, because they specifically mention a couple of different things that happened with that Muslim Wow, lady. that is baffling. <laughs> it's so stupid. Fucking hell. So 
And then you're so you're probably wondering how the doctor's love life is doing <laughs> at this point in the movie. Probably of all the relationships that you're concerned with, the wife that calls him in the car park earlier is probably the one that's really sticking in your craw. Well, don't worry. This movie's gonna gonna deal with that now. <laughs> at the end of that conversation that he was like faking, he actually wasn't. She was like, No, are you doing like that trope where you're walking away? We have to talk about something real, our relationship. She got mad at him. And now she's showing up. Yeah. She's showing up to to divorce him. Yes. Right? She's showing up with their gardener who she's been having an affair with. He's getting deported and she's going to go with him now because she's leaving the doctor. But am I right in thinking that the only way in which we find out that that's the gardener is in the credits at the end that he's listed as gardener because they only refer to him as Manuel during the actual film. Do they say Gardner at any point? Actually, no. you know what? I don't know. I, I may have just been getting that off of your notes. I was checking, yeah. They say, they say Manuel, which to them is synonymous with Gardner. Yeah. I mean, we've got, <laughs> we all know what Manuel was doing there. Come on, Manuel, really? <laughs> but in the credits, he's not listed as Manuel at any point. He's only listed as Chief Physician's Gardener, a job description he's not given at any point oh, in the movie, amazing. rather than the name that he is given in the movie. The only thing we know about him is his name is Manuel. Yeah. So you've got to piece it together from context clues by eliminating other people from the cast. Yeah. Left with him. No, we have no idea who he is. And he shows up. M M Manuel is in this. He walks in with the wife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he's introduced as Manuel for a second. I was like, who the fuck is Manuel? Is this the movie now? What is happening? <laughs> so, and the doctor, she's like, you're never home and he takes care of me. And, and he's like, I can change. What do I need? What do I need to do? And she's like, you need a larger penis. And I'm like, what is happening in my life uh -huh. right now? I don't know what's going on. And he's like, but you can't take my kids. And she's like, they're actually Manuel's kids. I have the DNA evidence right here. In specifically the same envelope as the divorce papers, which is thrifty. That is smart. Right, yeah, you don't, no, it you don't is. have to fork out for two envelopes. And also, I don't like. I don't want to make a racial thing about this, but Manuel is black, right? Like, so he didn't notice his kids. His kids were black. I feel like you'd have. He's away that. a lot. He is away at work. <laughs> the movie. The movie doesn't see race, Noah. The movie does not see race. Oh, that's that's true. You know, you're right. You're right. Oh. And as Manuel, Manuel's just stood beside them for this entire <laughs> yes, conversation. He's not yes. And then the way he just very casual, casually says, like, sorry, as he walks off. Yes, it's yes, yes, probably my favorite moment of the whole film and possibly my favorite <laughs> moment of my whole life. It's incredible. I laughed a while. <laughs> just Manuel, he's like, sorry, I don't, I don't yeah, even know why I'd be here for this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. why, why, I could have stayed in the car. In the I don't know why she didn't leave Jesus me in the car. Christ. He might as well be like, Eskimo Brothers, high five. All right, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they leave. Manuel says, sorry, he doesn't want to be rude about it. And then the doctor sits down and the other doctor, the one that was taking the odd questions when he was doing even says, <laughs> it's okay. I've been married seven times and they all left and took everything I owned. And I'm like, that's that does That's not okay. We're not. Things are not better now. You, Jack. You are not helping, my dude. You are not <laughs> helping here. Also, you want to say four marriages in prenup? Come on, learn your yeah, lesson. You've got really, a point. Yeah, the last three I blame on you, man. Okay. <laughs> Marry me, divorce me, and steal my money four times. Shame on you. <laughs> Marry me, divorce me, steal my money five times. <laughs> So, and so, okay, then we cut to the doctors discussing ways that they could secretly send the president to China for the stem cell. I feel like you'd go to Mexico, it's closer. But anyway, so send him to China for stem cell treatment. And then we cut, and they're like, well, you know, the media would figure it out. Well, would that, I, what if we do, have you guys seen Ferris Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> what if we put like some pillows under the blankets and it yeah, looks kind of right. like him and we run a string a with the thing and turn on yep, <laughs> the, the snoring trophy noise. would come down yeah so we cut to our fucking world christian wrestling news reporter from before explaining to us that the president is too contagious now with a drug resistant disease for anyone to go see him and that's why nobody is able to go see him it has nothing to do with going to china nailed it that's the whole scene. So like the movie thought that people would watch this movie and be like, hold on. Now the movie doesn't make sense. Wouldn't people want to go see the president? <laughs> One line from a news guy, bad infection, you can't. And everybody's like, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's a level of consistency in terms of uh, giving the audience explanations that they don't follow through to when we do actually meet the president's uh, stunt double in the hospital room in a moment. <laughs> right. It, it gets even dumber. They don't. They're not consistent. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so we cut to the Flotus. She's talking to there's this character. We haven't mentioned him yet, but he's the guy who is like taking the brain images of the president and talking constantly about being able to build a computer that'll read his fucking mind, right? In the space of a week, yeah, he's managed that in a week. Fair yes. play to this researcher, he is making it work. Right, and he's <laughs> 19. Yeah. So, but the 19-year-old surgeon is talking to the Flotus now and she's like, I'm really excited about the mind-reading computer that you're working on. Here's a check for $100,000. And he's like, oh, uh, I thank you for that, I guess. She's like, but can I be the first one to ask him a question? And he's like, well, I don't know, because, you know, he's got this drug resistant disease and you can't go in there and see him. She's like, I just gave you $100,000. He's like, but in that case, yes. Yes. <laughs> It's actually just a blank sheet of printer paper, but we'll we'll pretend you gave me a hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollars. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what it wasn't. And it wasn't her saw fucking that. lines. Oh my god! Just learn your lines. I have them written down. You're carrying a piece of paper. At least write your lines on that. And then there you, you go. Have to pause constantly. <laughs> so, so she brings him in so that she can ask a question of the president. But then he explains that he actually has a new and more severe form of brain damage and can't speak even using the mind reading computer, which we've then introduced into this movie in like six different scenes only to never use. (laughs) So, okay. So then, and keep in mind that what's supposed to have happened is that they're supposed to have actually taken the president to China swapped in a different person in a coma with his body into his room and made up this story about him having a drug resistant infection, which means that she was standing next to a different person with a coma and didn't notice it wasn't her husband. Yes, because his face was off shot. Off screen. Yes, right. Exactly. (laughs) Because then we get this scene where, where apparently they forgot like, oh, wow, how would she have a knife? So we get this really quick shot of her like at home choosing between her many big knives. <laughs> and then we get like, honestly, I, I'm sure we all considered best worst stabbing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She pulls out this comic again, you know, the ribbon cutting scissors of knives. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly that. Right. We also, we're, we're 67 minutes in and this is where we get our first sound effect of the entire <laughs> film, which is that knife. I don't know what the sound effect is meant to be, but I'm just excited that they found one. Well, and not only did they find one, but they found it 31 times in a row. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so much so that it runs over the dialogue into yes. the next scene. Really slow yes. stab. <laughs> really yeah. slow stab. <laughs> and she does this like nine times and then she's like, okay, that's good. So that's good. She pulls out the knife. She's sitting in front of the husband, the, the comatose patient that she hasn't yet noticed isn't her husband. She stands up. The camera rises up above him, right? So that we don't have to see the, the dirty deed. She takes the knife all the way up above. She like very clearly dips it in a red paint bucket that's not really super duper close to the guy she's supposed to be stabbing <laughs> and then lifts it up and does that again like four fucking time. Yeah, like like she's winding back a trebuchet. She just sort of winches her way up. (laughs) Again, this is some other guy in a... They found a body double coma guy and she's like, yeah, this is my husband. Yeah, right, right. So, okay, so then we cut to the doc casually chatting with his colleagues about how best to cover up the Flotus's murderous rampage. Right? So and and what they land on, and this is so insane, I have no idea how you get there, but they're like, well, we'll just have to pretend that the president is dead. And then when he gets back from China, he'll be alive. That's the most <laughs> logical way to go from here. And everybody's like, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. That does make perfect sense. Is that what they agree on? Because they agree that they were going with the story that the president was dead. But I thought, but he, he isn't dead. And then he's going to come back from China not dead. So like, why are you going to bring the president back after he's announced as dead? Or why announce him as dead if you know he's not? Surely what the hospital need to do here is go like, oh yeah, no, she's a different patient's died. The president's somewhere else. Right. Everyone be more excited about the fact that, that the president is still alive. None of this, oh, no. this brought me, this brought me so much. Their plan is to have a closed casket, fake <laughs> funeral. So the closed word there covers the lie 
until they have to bring back the alive president. They they just ignore that. Somebody's like, hold on, though. I don't know if this plan is going to work. What about the insurance companies covering the coma, fake coma guy? <laughs> they dwell on the insurance part for a second? They, they do. do. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he's dead, then the, we're not going to get reimbursed for any of the work that we do on him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. But part of this is they're worried that the first lady will kill them if she finds out that the president's still alive and not dead. But if he's yes. still alive and fine, why would she kill them? Her husband's still alive and she can get everything she needs. See, this is why we need socialized medicine. You can't fake yes. the murder of the president and then give him the care with the fake guy. And that's why we're socialist. We don't know. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I have no idea how the therefore works in their universe. But anyway, we cut immediately from that to the float is speaking at the president's funeral. Again, she's in front of the green screen. It is glitching out so much at this point that you might as well just say it's strobing. <laughs> right. She's like, my husband is dead. And his last words were, you sure aren't stabbing me to death. That sure isn't what happened. Right. Yeah, it's not so much green screen by this point as like Zoom call virtual background levels right, yeah. of consistency. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, they're having the funeral at the Golden Gate Bridge. How weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the float is now that her husband's dead. She's still trying to get that number, which means that it's time for her to go to, you guessed it, <laughs> a psychic imam. I'll let you, I'll let you catch up for a second. <laughs> This guy, this psychic imam is played by the same guy who played the imam from earlier, the one who got shot. Yes. But it's not the same imam. It's no. a different imam who just looks exactly the same as... Ex <laughs> the, they've used the same actor in exactly the same costume, basically. Right. But it is a different person. He has four beards, not three. So it's a different guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you got to look at the glasses on his glasses, obviously. And he, he's reading, he's, he's like doing a reading for her and he's reading from a book in front of him. But he is reading from that book. That book is filled with his lines. It's very clearly they put his lines in the book. They, they've made him have a book so he could read his lines from them. Well, it's even worse than that, right? Because they don't want the book to be visible. So the book is in a drawer on the table that he's holding. <laughs> and he's is. got the drawer out for no goddamn reason. It's so <laughs> fucking obvious and stupid. And he's basically like running his fingers along the line to sound out each word as he's going. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And she's like, you you know, you're a psychic. I need you to get in touch with my dead husband and have him tell me what the code was to, to get into the bank account, right? And the, the psychic mom says, actually, your husband's still alive. And so she calls Doc <laughs> to yell at him for her husband still being alive. To be clear, the plot point here is that she finds out the husband is still alive because mediums are real. And when they try to talk to a dead person who's not dead, nobody answers them. And that medium just told her what happened. Yeah, no, it went straight to voicemail. So he's not. <laughs> That's the plot. Yeah. Yeah. So and also, of course, she calls the doctor in the middle of his surgery. Right. He has to stop surgerying to tell her. And then the doctor says to her, he's like, hey, look. We had to go along with the murder and pretend that he was dead so that you wouldn't get in trouble for killing a patient. And I'm like, take me there, Doc. It's just, it's just, <laughs> here's some yarn. Here's some push pins, pictures of everyone in this movie. Just get me there. I have all day, but no. And then she apologizes. She hangs up the phone. She apologizes to the imam. She's like, sorry that I ever doubted your psychic abilities. It's like, it's okay. It happens all the time. She tries to give him money, but he won't take it because he's, you know, proper. Or whatever, he does. He doesn't need money, right? He, he does need possessions though, because during this scene, his digital watch beeps the hour, so he does still believe <laughs> yeah, he it does. possessions, doesn't it? <laughs> right? But he explains that like money is the root of all evil, so don't even worry about that hundred billion dollars in the Swiss account from the tithing from the oil companies, the war criminals, and you should become a Muslim now, right? And she does. She, she does. does. She's like, oh, okay. She says the magic Muslim words and becomes a goddamn Muslim. And then she goes outside and she's like, hey, Secret Service guys, we're going to have to murder that imam. He just made me into a Muslim. So now I'm probably going to hell or something. What happens from there? We will never know. So then we cut. To, Jesus Christ. Get, get ready. What's happening listeners. with Channel 69 News? <laughs> Things are about to get so fucking weird on you. Okay, so then we cut to the anchor at Channel 69 News. Not the guy that we saw before, a whole new character that is the anchor. Mm -hmm. 
And she's telling us about a plane crash, which we're supposed to fill in, like, you know, from the details that we have. It was the plane that the president, the comatose president was on. It was shot down by an Al Qaeda missile that meant to shoot a Chinese plane down. Yes. I guess. Is the resolution to the film. Right. Because because immediately after that, a big title card comes up and just says, and they all lived happily ever after. Yeah, no, it does do that. <laughs> that is that is what happens. Big titles, those words. Yes. And then we have a five minute Muslim musical dance number with all the actors from the movie. Yep. Yes. And then we have credits. That's the, that's, this is that's this the is, end. This is movie. how the movie ends. It does. And that that's so I watched this film before you two guys. I don't know whether you'd seen in my notes and you were prepared for this. I saw this <laughs> with zero preparation. And so when this started, my notes run what? No, seriously. What? Oh, no. I take it back. Avant-garde music number while they dance in circles and shake the hips. That all makes sense now. While they mime to singing in a language neither they nor I know. Yes! For a full five minutes, the most confusing five minutes of my life. Yeah. People saw this, like their test audience saw this ending and they were like, what? No, seriously, <laughs> what? And this movie's version of like, shh, was Muslim Bollywood dance number? For five mm. minutes? Yes. And then you forgot the what that you asked and we're done. Oh, my God. My notes were just, my eyes hurt like real bad. And to my ears, <laughs> what's the opposite of ASMR? <laughs> <laughs> this is that. This is the opposite of ASMR. <laughs> Holy shit. Is MRSA. Oh. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Yes, one is more pleasant than the other. And that's it. That's how the whole fucking thing ends. I honestly, mm. how surprised would any of you have been if there hadn't been an after credit scene that was just Eli going, gotcha, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to watch back that five-minute dance number and Eli's going to be one of the characters, isn't he? No, isn't right, he like he's that, dressed as like a monkey. video of the, the, the uh, gorilla doing the, yes. the, the moonwalk during the basketball <laughs> yes, game. Yes, exactly. It's that with Eli. He's walking you through the whole time. Close your browser window. Eli's shitting behind you somehow. On a table. <laughs> All right. Well, well Marsh, I, I lack the words to sufficiently thank you for sitting through that bizarre ass shit. I can say whatever we ask of you next won't be as strange. Just coherence is all I ask. That's the bar that I've set myself now. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be exciting. Just coherent. That's all I ask of you guys. That'd be a nice change of pace. It's be Muslim. It has a coherent ending, I thought. Right. There you go. <laughs> And well, that's going to do it for our review of The President Goes to Heaven. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to reel you back in for next week. So, Heath, tell us what's on deck. We're going to be watching Lockdown 2025. And I believe it's an apocalypse movie made by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, all right. That sounds fun. So we'll see how that goes. A J-dub flick. I mean, anything but this sounds fun to be honest with you. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 389 to a merciful close. Once again, thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all of his stuff. And an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the Scathing the Citation to DD minus and the Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Biblical Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Inventing a mind-reading device proved bittersweet for the hospital with a coma ward full of rape victims. What? <laughs> That dance number remained burned to the back of my eyes forever. George W. Bush went to Muslim heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Where everybody's a mentalist. <laughs>
Larry. How do you like it when I do it? Lowercase Larry. Larry. Lowercase L. Larry. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.